this is a series on gun stock checkering, something that a lot of people are not really familiar with. But we're going to walk you through the entire process of gun stock checkering, how to lay out a pattern, forming the borders, and laying out master lines, which all of these intersecting lines are based on, and then actually carving and bringing them to fine points for a nice gripping surface, which is the purpose of checkering, as apart from the aesthetics. Also, we'll go touch upon things such as these uncheckered ribbons running through it, the fleur de lis, some carving borders, such as that. Let's identify some checkering terms. A border is simply the outline of the area that is checkered. You wonder where the borders go? Wherever you want them. Here's the way I do it. I simply mark about what I think would be about the right the, you know, thickness of a border. Mark it on some kind of a stock, a piece of paper, card, whatever. And then lining this one up at the top of the stock, and then I mark it. Put on here, mark it. Mark, mark. Once I got them all done, I take a nice flexible straight edge, line them up carefully, and I do this all using a grease pencil, and connect the dots. I have a, now I have a perfectly straight line, relatively perfectly straight. <laughs> drawn in, you use a knife. If you try to follow it with a file or a, a V chisel, the wood grain wants to pull it around. But by simply taking the blade and you roll it in and press, and you can stay right exactly on a really fine pencil line. And you inch it forward and you keep doing that to the line. That being accomplished, it's time to go to your veining chisel. Again, it's a very fine V chisel, made very sharp. And you get into that line and you cut it out. And uh, it's all a secret of control here. You've got to be pushing enough to get it to cut but we're ready to uh, one foot on the brake you might say it's kind of like red driving with one foot on the brake one on the gas so what I do is with my right hand I'm holding the chisel and I'm actually mostly holding it back so and you got fully flexed arm so it's flexed and then the forward motion is done with my left hand thumb underneath it and I'm just going to push it head with the thumb and I only ease up the tension on the right hand enough to allow it to go forward at a control distance and a control rate. Hmm. This, this way, is just getting the board. I want to. I think about stopping. I stop. It stops right there on the dime. Once that's done, you need to deepen that a bit. Now, if we're doing a very straight line, we go to a planer joiner, a long bladed chisel which will tend to follow a straight line quite readily. And or if it's in a perfectly straight line, we use a regular shorter single line cutter. And I'm basically just deepening the groove. And 
And if the line looks like it wants to get a little wavy on me, it's going to veer into the side anyway. Again, I use a true joiner planer, a long one. And by keeping pressure towards the back, two-thirds of it, it keeps it right in the groove and it continues to follow the groove the rest, or it doesn't follow the groove, it follows a straight line. If the groove isn't straight, it'll wander out and make it straight. You only have to do the border, you only want to do it about half depth. And you outline the area to be checkered. Now on a conventional checkering job without carved borders, it's simply a series of lines that outline and frame out the border. In this case, I have a carved border. So what I had to do is, uh, before I can checker, I have to know the limits of that checkering. So using my grease pencil, I freehand drew in flowers and vines that are going to frame the checkered area. First, I determine where I want it, and I just try to trying it out, and I decide right about here from thar to thar. Then draw and the way I'll draw it when it's a vine thing is I simply draw the line and to keep it aesthetically looking proper and correct you want that gently graceful curving line. In nature sometimes it takes more of an abrupt turn it doesn't look pleasing to the eye. So we try to just keep all of the lines very gracefully just curving around all the time. Once they're all curved Again, we go through it. Now, in this case, we're just going to move and just use a short single cutter because it's a curvy line. And there's a few different ones I could use for that. The single line cutter, it's relatively short. Here's even a shorter one if the line tends to get really short. And uh, this is one of my favorites. I like this because it has, you know, so much longer drop shank here. It's always important whenever checkering or carving that when you're cutting any of these lines you want your whole forearm to be moving in the direction of the cut. This is very important otherwise it tends to if you try to like do it this way crossways it's going to start wandering different directions out of your control. So you want the arm going to straight forward cut. The other trick is always keep the cutter at a 90 degree to the surface. You don't want to accidentally start doing this. You're going to widen the cut to one direction or the other accidentally. But as much as possible, hold it straight up to the line. And most of these cutters you're going to find they, they cut on either the push or the pull stroke. There are a few of the carbon ones that actually cut either way. Now, having just said that, they're designed, the teeth are set to cut one direction. Sometimes it's beneficial to actually cut it in reverse. Just like when you're trying to cut, start uh, with a saw, saw on a board in half, the teeth grab too aggressively to make a fine line. You're trying to get right on the pencil line, so you go the opposite direction and it very easily makes a little mark, something to grab onto. So you'll end, you can end up doing that a few times. So in the curved surfaces, that's what I do. I drew in a line, and on there, you really can't follow it with a knife very good because they're too curvy. So what you use is the vein or chisel. And I just get on that drawn line. Actually, here I have a piece of a drawn line. And I just... Just deepen it a little bit so you got something to work with. Get some kind of a track to follow. So you use the knife originally to press that line, then you use this to open it up. Right. And that's enough just to give me a toehold for my single line cutter. You see, I can, again, without a cradle, I can afford to freehand turn the stock in the hand as I'm going to keep everything true at the right angle, which would be 
really impossible with a, a cradle, a checkering cradle. And you'd end up either going uh, contrary to the line, cutting not with your arm in the right way, but with something like that. And once I have that line, then I space it. And uh, because I'm making a vine here. So the vine will have two sides to it. And I'll use a 20 line spacer. And I put the blunt part in the furrow that I've already got started. And this is a very gentle procedure because it, it'll tend to want to creep out quite easily. The one's riding the line and the other one's making a new one right. perfectly spaced next to it. Yeah, one twentieth of an inch beside it, I got another line being created to the original. Okay. Now, again, for demonstration purposes, normally I try to I draw the complete line, carve the complete line. But that way to go over that, we've got a lightly carved line, so we now we're going over with a spacer. And at this stage, there, you're going to have some little slips out. It's so shallow right now to run in. But again, we're going to be carving this whole surface, so it's not a real concern at this stage. That will be cleaned up with the carving. you know, what, what area is going to be checkered. In this case, it's framed out with my floral leaf, which I have uh, the preliminary carving in place. Now within this field, I'm going to have French checkering as the grip has. The skip line pattern. Four lines of 20 lines per inch and one line of 10 per inch, four of 20, one of 10. And we use this gauge, and it's a three to, three and a half to one angle or to the three angle. The three and a half seems to look right most most appropriately most of the time. And what you do want to do is just get this pretty well centered on there. And again, these lines are all coming at angles. Anyway, it, no one could ever tell if it wasn't exactly right. But kind of in the ballpark. A grease pencil, again, on a smooth surface, you need to wet it a little bit. I'll just touch it to my tongue. This nice plastic, flexible plastic can wrap right around the checkering and then I can draw my line in. And while it's still in place, when I get the other angle on it, try to get it to cover the field as well as possible. Now, a lot of times, it's a bigger area or just uh, harder to reach, you can't get it all at once. Well, once you have it started, though, and at the right angle, you simply can extend that line with your straight edge. And this, at this stage, it would be nice to have three hands, but it can be done. So that line is now extended full length. We'll get over and extend this one full length. Okay. Now you can see it's a little thick in spots and wavy. Not wavy, but uh, varies in thickness. But that's all right because this is going to be a automatic straightener. Now that stencil was uh, angled, pre-angled for you, right? Right. So that you can get the proper, now is that uh, 30 degrees? What is that? It's three and a half times longer than it is wide. Three and a half to one ratio uh, triangle taper. Okay. And this is three. This is a little sharper. And it, it seems to come out right because you want these to be not squares, but diamond shaped, more elongated. Right. So this, this, this angles the diamond shape you're looking for. Right. 
So these are what I've just done is laid out the master lines. Okay. The, the entire check in this area is going to be based on those two lines. These go one direction, this the other direction. Okay. This gauge is also very handy because it is a checkering gauge. If you have a gun with checkering on it and you're not sure you're going to repair it or recut the checkering, this shows you 16 line per inch, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 32. You simply line it up and the little grooves and the lines should line up exactly on there. So anyway, it's cut in. Now we take that nice sharp knife and we roll it. And you don't need a lot of pressure, just enough to make somewhat of an indentation. But I am pressing a bit. But it's so easy to stay right on a line over curved surfaces. And over here, it misses the point of the leaf and it continues right on to the flower. We'll just cut in the other one. These are like a very soft uh, yellow uh, grease pencil and they'll rub off quite easily from handling. So while it's on, I'll cut them both before I accidentally rub them off. Now you can just slide it along too, as long as things are going well for you. Now that they're cut in, hopefully a wet finger will take that grease pencil off. You don't have to at this stage, but I just wanted to show you what kind of a line we have here. Doesn't look like much. It's a pretty fine line. Too fine to follow with the checking tool, so we use the veiner. And it will with a little luck, it'll follow that line. And again, you want your hand and the hand motion in line behind it all. Quite important. Or you'll tend to accidentally pull to one side or the other. So you have that to deal with. And then you have the grain, which there's soft and hard spots in it, and it tends to want to pull that blade wherever it wants to too. This is why by having a cut in line that we did with a knife should be enough to supersede or override the grain's tendency to want to pull you off track. So start off shallow, don't try to get it all out right. in one not shot. At, not at all. As gentle to... as you go. And once in a while it wants to bite. And you gotta make it back off a little bit. And again, the critical part in all the checkers of is don't override your lines. At this stage, you see the flowers are not fully carved. And the reason for that is, is that I'm gonna accidentally nick it once in a while. But they haven't been carved out yet, so it doesn't matter. Because as I sand and carve those out, that'll obliterate the slight nicks along the way. So I've done that with the veiner. And you could even use a, a single line uh, checker, a standard single line like this to go from here on if it's deep enough. Now all these checking files, they come in two uh, degrees of angle. Some are 90 degree and some are 660 degree. The, the V cut that they make. Which I, one are we using here? I use uh, 60 almost entirely. Now, um, some of these are 90s. Like for this, uh, those I use for superficial cuts, it really doesn't matter. In fact, it might be a little bit of an advantage. It makes it slightly wider when you're doing that shallow a cut. A little wider is okay. But for all the final cutting, I like to use uh, a nice 60 degree because as straight and true as you try to be, 
there's going to be some, I'm all really exaggerated, there's going to be some left and right yaw to your cutting. So that 60 is going to end up more of a 90 degree groove after you pass through this line at least five, six times, which you will on every line. It's going to end up enlarging it a bit. So I say normally, uh, I usually cut them with one of these short 60 degrees. And again, before I get too deep, I like to use one of my planer joiners. And now this in itself, it's, 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 it's a little bit dull. It's kind of a purpose. It's not meant to deepen at all. It's only to shear off the sides, straight, straighten the line out. That has gone a little off key. But uh, rather longer. It's sort of like this, uh, this does the same thing as a jointer planer, a long blade. But you see it's got a belly to it. It's curved. So the whole surface is not biting at once. And yet it does tend to want to stay in a track because it's the length of it. And so by running this through, it will, even if there's just a hint of it, that line wanting to widen out or go a little crooked, this really tends to do it. You notice I'm turning the stock in the hand as they go up because I'm going around a curved surface. Again, another reason to not use a cradle. I don't know how you would do this in a cradle except by stopping about 12 times, turning the stock slightly, tighten it down. Or completely repositioning your entire inch, body directly. Or constantly moving, dancing Perpendicular to it, yeah. Room. Okay, and then we do the same thing with the other line. And we'll deepen that gradually. Now we've got a fairly uh, substantial line there to guide us. Now again, as I said, we're doing this one, it's a French skip line checkering. So we're going to use 20 line per inch, four of those, and then four of the, uh, I'll see if I do the other side, I'll go that direction, it'll be easier for you to see. Make sure I have the right tool, not a, this is a 20, not a 24 inch. In fact, usually when I check here, I'll take only the 20 line spacers on the table and the 24s, put them away somewhere so I don't accidentally pick up the wrong one in the middle of it. Now that I have the V marked off, cut and deepened enough so that this blunt uh, edge blade will ride in the groove, we can start spacing. So we run it in, and I'm keeping ever so slightly a little bit of pressure to the left side keep on the on the blunt side. We want to keep that blunt blade in the groove is the key thing. And I just went.